Yes, we do. Uh, today is August 8th. It is 1136, and this is the beginning of the meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. Jennifer, can you read the disclaimer? Do you have it? Um, I do. Okay, if you would read it, that would be great because I don't have it and I'd take forever reading it. Sure. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequate adequately access the proceeding in real time via techno technological means. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, we need to do a roll call because I don't actually know who's here. So if you're present, um, let's see, Elise I know is not going to be present. Um, Marty, are you here? I'm here. Yay, okay. Um, and let's see, who else? Um, Ian, are you here? Uh, yes, Ian, I'm here. Perfect. Okay. I'm Ian and Co I'm here. Cody, are you here? No, Cody. Right? Is that right? Okay. And Saren, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay. So we have Saren, Marty, Ian, and me. And unless we get one more person, um, Jim. And I see Jim Crunier. He's here. So, yes. Jim, are you here? Whoops, your speech is breaking up, I think. Do you have, are you unmuted? Well, this is Jim Cretanier and I'm here, but I haven't been here. sworn in yet, so I'm not, a, I'm not a voting member. Oh no, okay. Huh. But that you, might, you, that Myra, might, go ahead. This is Pamela, you, you have four voting members. Right. But so you're, you're so you're but Marty will be leaving. And so we can't vote on the other item. Oh. I, I, Elise um, did say that she was not um, able to join on Thursday, but I did send her a, an email and I sent one um, to Cody as well to see if they might be uh, either of them might be able to join. Okay. Myra, I'll be here all meeting. Right. Yeah, she but said, I would I was hoping to deal with UMass because we weren't going to be able to get a time to get together very easily. So I was hoping to tag it uh -huh. on to the end as unanticipated business. And I understand that you cannot vote. So no if we don't yeah. have four voting, you can explain, but you can't vote. Right. Um, so no, I can't even do that. You can't even um, explain. Okay. Yeah. No, so I, I, I think though, I'm sorry, Myra, to interrupt. Yep. But it, as long as you have a quorum, which you do have, you can take a vote of the um, of the members who are present. Um, so you would you would have a quorum for the meeting, and then of the three members who are able to vote. Oh, then we could actually just say Marty recused herself. Herself, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that is that is for people. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we're going to mess around with the meeting order again um, because Jason Skeels, oh no, I guess we need to have announcements. Does anyone have an announcement? And I also need to welcome Jim. I'm sorry, I am a little bit befuddled here. First, Jim Cretanier. How do you say your name, please? <laughs> uh, Cretanier. Cretanier. Close. Yes, okay. There wasn't a you there. Cretanier. 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 Yes. Okay. Perfect. Welcome to the Disability Access Advisory Committee. We are very happy to have you. We will be very happy to have your expertise, which I understand is considerable. So this will be terrific. And I'm very glad that you've joined us. I'm very glad that the manager appointed you. And um, okay, so does anyone have any announcements? Mm, no. Do we have any public, Pamela? Or Jennifer? 
You do have uh, one person in the uh, in the uh, public, one attendee. Okay, is uh, is that public person interested in making a comment? Their hand is who, raised. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I don't know who it is because I don't have my headphones, so I can't look. My uh, headphones are. It's Tracy Zappia. Oh, okay. Hello, Tracy. Whoops. I think you're unmuted. I think I'm muted. Hi, Myra. So this is Tracy Hi. Zappia. Yay. Hi. Okay. Good to, there you are. Good to okay. hear you. And um, I didn't really have much of a public comment. I had um, meant to email you earlier, but it's been busy. But I did just have a few updates about. Perfect. Thank you. One, um, one I know that the um, council voted in late June about they did approve the final version of the snow and ice bylaw, which now includes other obstructions to the public way, including vegetation. And so I was going to share a copy of that with the committee. Perfect. Um, Do you know um, who is the enforcer? The enforcers, as I understand it, is the inspection department. Um, and uh -huh. Jason Skeels, who's here, maybe like more familiar. So I um, hadn't heard the new rules yet. So I'd, uh, you're, all right. Well, I'm I will share those too. because um, I actually asked Athena O'Keefe to send them because I haven't seen them in the new bylaw yet, the general bylaws. Okay, so the enforcers um, are inspection, not the police, and not the DPW, as you correct. understand. Correct, yes. Okay. okay. Um, and the other update was about the streetlights policy. Yes. Um, is there was an animated discussion at last night's council meeting about the policy. Um, a number of concerns had been raised by myself and others. So it has been referred back to committees for more consideration, including TSO, and GOL, and some okay. people had asked that TAC weigh in as well. Um, it's currently scheduled to go back to the council no later than November 20th. So it's continuing to have changes. So are they still working with the version that we saw, which had nothing to do with placement and had everything to do with the type of lighting? Um, or, so or have they moved on to placement? So the thing is that they haven't really moved on to placement very much, though in some of the recent comments, including the ones that I submitted, there was some different, there were comments and concerns about treating different types of roadways different. Like, for example, I had expressed concern in the last two versions that I saw about arterial roadways and dimming the lights on arterial roadways because that's where the majority, you know, I think 86% of Amherst fatalities and serious injury crashes have occurred on arterials in the last mm -hmm. 13 years. And that's where the vehicles are going faster. Sometimes there's not good sidewalks. There's just a lot more injuries. And, you know, there's graphs about like the faster vehicles are going, the more likely people are to be injured, both on the driver's side and also pedestrians and bicyclists and so on. Um, so, you know, they, they haven't got, the sponsors haven't gone back to the original proposal where they split up the town like based on zoning districts and assign some as being high pedestrian areas and low pedestrian areas. But um, I guess I would encourage them to have some locational components, especially around the types of roadways. And so okay. those are discussions that are ongoing. Okay. We need to and um, and also, oh, again. and the finance committee is also reviewing it in terms of the financial implications of the okay. new policy, because, of course, we have limited budgets and, yeah. you know, other people have other priorities. So, yeah. And okay. other than that, I'm just happy to be here and I, I can just Perfect. sit back and listen. No, okay, so thank thank you, you very, very much. Okay, because Jason is here, we're going to go to the update. Hi, Myra. Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt. I just realized I, I did have one. This is Ian. I realized that oh. I had one brief uh, uh, announcement um, yeah. that I had from okay. earlier. Um, so the legislature finally passed the state budget um, and included in, in that is how the first billion dollars of the fair share amendment um, money is broken down. Um, for those who don't know, the fair share amendment is was voted on in November 
to uh, an increase of 4% uh, income tax on any income above the first million dollars. Um, mm -hmm. And so in that is $90 million. Well, so 301.5 million statewide for public transportation, 90 million of that goes into improvements at regional transit authorities. Um, and of that 90 million, 4 million to support expanded mobility options for older adults, people with disabilities, and low-income individuals. Um, so I just wanted to share that with the committee so that we had that uh, sort of on file or on our radar as we continue our advocacy. And I'll, I'll share the document that I have. This is great to know. So 4 million total dollars split between the MBTA and the 15 regional RTAs or excluding the MBTA? Excluding the MBTA. The MBTA is a separate pile okay. of- Okay, uh, so uh, the regional transit authorities have a budget of about $100 million. And this is actually 4% increase. So that's pretty good. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but it actually be split between 15 RTAs, but the whole budget that the RTAs get from the state is $100 million or thereabouts. Um, so thank you for that information. That's, um, that's a 4% increase. So cool, uh, good to know. And I'm on the PVTA board of the uh, paratransit council. So next week, I guess I might find out more about that, but thank you for bringing that up, Ian. I appreciate but, it. And I'll email you the document. I'll email everyone the document. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right, Jason, can you give us a, a status update on the projects that we've been sort of talking about? And we'll, we'll um, I guess the North Common, Pomeroy, the uh, Mill River um, and anything else. Um, and then we can talk about the traffic signals. You can include that in it. It's all part of what you know about. So that's yeah, great. I'll, I'll start with Mill River. I know the least about this project, although I know we've been tasked with it. Um, Guilford has a, a, a ADA access report that highlights all the problems and the and the things that are wrong over there, especially around the pavilion and other smaller issues. Um, so I just need to get a look at that report and we can start tackling the bits and pieces that need to be designed and the bits and pieces that are just, you know, replace a sign or fix this or fix that. So we need to look at what the bigger project items are and then the smaller stuff will fall behind, uh, will come in behind that. So that's as much as I know about Mill River, um, which isn't a whole lot. I wish I had a, a better list, but I don't have that report in front of me and I haven't had a chance to review it. Okay. So that's Mill River. Um, Pomeroy is going great. They have poured, I'm gonna say about 75% of the crosswalk ramps are all poured. Um, and uh, all the islands are in. They are planning to do a final pave uh, in early September. That'll be the top coat of asphalt. Uh, in the meantime, they're working on the ramps and all the sidewalks that connect all those. Um, all the RRFB foundations are in the ground and ready for, um, ready for the rapid reflecting beacons. Um, the street light po uh, pole bases are in the ground and ready for street lights. So that is really coming together. The contractor we're working with is hoping to be out of there by the end of September. So that intersection should be fully finished, functional, uh, paved and ready to go uh, by the end of September. And on budget? Uh, no, never. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That was a $5 million project that we got a $1.5 million earmark for. So we knew from the beginning that that was not going to make budget. Um, it was a generous earmark, but it was nowhere near enough. Um, so, so project do you shrunk. Know where that coming we shrunk. From? I do not. Guilford's very creative with budgets. Um, I'm sure some of it's going to come out of chapter 90. Um, but I, 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 don't know. I don't know everything about that. He's very. He should come into my neighborhood before he does that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. North Whitney Street, Hills Road, Redgate Lane are becoming absolutely treacherous. 
Yeah, we've mm -hmm. gotten some the complaints left. from all of those. I mean, they're treacherous. And we've got treacherous roads all over the place. Yep. And yep. squeaky wheels to squeak about them, too. Well. <laughs> so we tackle as much as we can with our budget, and we move yeah. on to the next year. So we'll, it'll, so it'll fall into place in the next upcoming years. OK. Um, I think there was more money for Chapter 90 in that in that um, the the thing that Ian reported on. I don't know what the number was, was but I thought little, I heard. I heard I, something like twenty five thousand, which really that's, oh, that's yeah, a not going to do It's oh, not a yeah. whole lot when it comes to asphalt. No, but um, okay. but yeah, okay. so there's a little bit more, which is great. We can stretch it as far as we can. Um, so that is Pomeroy Lane, North Common. We are working with the contractor to have a pre-construction uh, meeting at some point to discuss the availability of the materials he needs to build everything. Um, he's pretty confident he can get 80% of the materials he needs this year so that he could get a solid start going. He could get all the drainage in the ground. He could get all the subsurface things done at least before the snow flies, if the snow flies this year. Um, and then the, the rest of the granite would be delivered in the early spring. And that's all the sort of big, decorative, beautiful um, granite seating walls and stuff like that, that that really make the park nice, uh, similar to Kendrick Park, but, a, but much on a slightly grander scale. Um, so that's North Common. We think we are going to start it this fall. We're just trying to make sure that the contractor's got the stuff he needs to really get it started and, and make a make a good dent in the project. And it sounds probable. So we're moving on that one. Um, North Common. And oh, so the accessible traffic signal repairs, like I said earlier, before we started recording, um, we had that study done with, I believe it was Ocean State Signals, did an inventory of all our signals and all the pertinent ADA relevant pieces, like the audible signals and the, uh, there's the countdown feedback, the audible signals and a few other as the ADA aspects of all those signalized intersections. And we are currently, our electrician is working on pricing all the bits and pieces needed to upgrade all those to 100%. To so we're waiting on the, the numbers to come back for what that's gonna cost. Do you have any idea when you're going to get that information or I, the information about uh, Mill River? I don't, unfortunately. I wish I had more info on both of those, but I, I Guilford sort of threw me in this on the last minute. I just came back from vacation yesterday. Sorry. <laughs> Guilford gave me a really quick briefing yesterday, told me he wasn't going to be here today and that I could, you know, some of them I can talk to and, and I know more about than others, but the, those two, I don't know as much about those two projects, unfortunately. Okay. Does anyone on the committee have any questions for Jason? Well, I do. <laughs> okay. Um, there was a um, an email we got a while ago from Jim Crenier, and he brought to our attention the problem at the, at the intersection of 116 and Amherst College, and that it was almost impossible for people with mobility impairments to uh, use that intersection. And then I brought, it up, brought this up to Pamela and Myra, and Jay and uh, Guilford. And then I communicated with Gilbert, Guilford a few times, and he said that is handled by DOT. Yes. And he has no access to that. But he promised that he was going to get in touch with the person in charge of that project. And he was going to let us know, which I never heard anything since then so you do you have any updates on that i i can't specifically say if he had a conversation with them or not i believe he did um there's there's a small argument going on between mass dot engineers and the contractor as to how to make the handicap ramps accessible and to you know to the letter of the law and DOT keeps telling them to form it up and pour it. And if it's not right, they'll rip it out. They'll make them rip it out. But the contractor wants DOT to put it in writing on the plans, what those slopes and things can be. And they're sort of refusing to do it that way. So there's sort of a, it's a cart before the horse problem. The design was not specific. 
on all the different ramps and how they were supposed to be formed and poured. And when the state tells the contractor to do it, and if it's no good, we'll rip it out, then the contractor doesn't want to do it. Yeah. So it's not a great scenario. They're, they're, I think they're finally working it out. It looks like they have some of them formed because um, they did they did a lot of the asphalt approaches on a lot of those ramps and crosswalk um, ramps. So I think they've got it figured out. I haven't talked to them since I got back, but I think they've got it figured out. And there's that argument has been resolved, I guess I'll say. So I think they will be forming and pouring ramps relatively soon because they're actively going with the asphalt sidewalks. Um, for now, they are still gravel at those ramps. So they're not great as far as accessibility goes. I believe the buttons are active now. For a while, there were no ped buttons because they were switching from double set or single set single buttons to double buttons so i think those are closer now and those are actually functional because so i saw they had those wired um so the ped signals at 116 are good but the ramps are still not in so they are working on it but i, I don't know like again it's it's out of our control because it is a state project you we know just, we didn't even talk about that for the from the perspective of the uh, uh, the accessible signals, meaning the audible mm -hmm. portion, but I assume that they're going to have yeah, that. Yeah, the new ones should meet all the standards. Um, right. I assume that um, the state, yeah, the state will the state will be held to meet all the all the the pertinent standards. I'm sure. So those ones. I, all the I right hope. Gear. I hope this project could be accomplished finished before those year starts because I'm sure there are lots of students at uh, Amherst College with mobility mm -hmm. impairments and yeah. we would like to have that open up to everyone right. and we brought this up uh, to the town's attention when was it Myra at least in our March meeting it I might have been, I think it was May but the town May? has no the town has no authority over it that's the problem I know. Yeah. The, the thing is, you know, but there is the ADA regulations and we have to, uh, to uh, watch on behalf of all the people with disabilities. And so if the state is falling behind, I even thought of contacting Jeff Dugan, but I didn't know whether, I mean, I said I'd first bring it up in this meeting today and see where it leads us. Is your concern that they aren't going to have it working at the end? Or is your concern that during construction, they haven't taken care of it in a safe way? My concern is, uh, I don't have any doubt that it will be accomplished at the end one way or another, but I just want it to be addressed high priority. Like it shouldn't be a discussion between the contractor and the state. You know, because states should have some rules and they should just be applied. So why should people with disabilities suffer from this for such a long time too? It's not just a month or two. Yeah, it's been those ramps have been gravel for quite a while. They should have they should have provided some form of access or detour of some sort by now. But I, I like I said, I we you know we can poke and we can say, hey, you guys need to get on this, but. It, it really comes down to the contractor and the state coming to an agreement and, and the state needs to really sort of spell out how those ramps need to be formed. You know, they, they need to design it and it should have been designed from the beginning. That's right. But That's when they right. put it on the contractor to design it in place, it's kind of, it's unfair. It's like um, a change order. Why did they do that? Yeah. 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 Open for, it leaves them wide open for any kind of a change order. Like if this is yeah. impossible, then, then set, go back to the drawing board and tell us how to do it. So I get where the contractor is coming from and the state can be kind of rigid in their, you know, not giving the appropriate guidance sometimes. Marty, do you know anything about this kind of mess with the state? I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's um, a particularly difficult situation mm -hmm. because particularly on the southwest corner, Mm -hmm. It's going to be almost utterly impossible to make that accessible because it's a sidewalk and not an interstitial path. Mm -hmm. So you can't flatten it out because um, yeah. it goes up the hill, 
right there. It's, yeah. it's, it's a real technical problem because, yeah. and it's one of those questions, one of those things where you shake your head and wonder why you're putting a curb cut at that point, because there's no place for anybody to go beyond it, except down route nine. You can't go forward if you're in a, particularly if you're in a manual chair, mm -hmm. it will be very difficult. It's always across been. from the southwest to the northwest. No, that's it's the southwest corner going down one sixteen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Up to the so it's not the crossing. It's not the crossing that's the problem. It's the sidewalk. Now, what kind well, of path did you say? Pardon? What, did, what, what was the word you used for a path? That it uh, was interstitial. That means it doesn't run parallel to a road. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So that's why sidewalks are defined as running parallel to a road. And those are not required to be made accessible because you can't regrade the road in order to solve the problem. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So yeah. the solution would be to make a much longer interstitial path that for which you'd have to take some land and maybe make a like a loop that would I have don't a, even know how you could do it you know okay well, no because you've got steep. those you've got the uh amherst college buildings um right near the curb. this is where you have to start looking at things like site elevators hmm. jim and saren do you um have any comments about this you know much much more well, about I it mean, than i do i uh, haven't really been at the site myself personally so i cannot make any comments but i just uh was following up with an alert i got from a colleague okay who's right here so yes um yeah i would i would just point out i mean it's that general intersection has been impassable to people with significant mobility impairment since before Amherst College commencement. Uh, they're on track for being inaccessible after school opens. Uh, if one corner is not accessible, that in itself is not, you know, a, a huge ADA problem because you know people can cross over the. There's a anyway, you can get around it. But the problem is and has been. That there really is that there aren't any alternative pathways there without going extraordinarily far out of your way. Yeah. And I, I understand that it's not a, a, a problem that this group with the town officials can resolve, but it's really crazy how the Department of Transportation approaches all this. If anything, they've made the situation worse over the last two weeks. Or the contractor has, or together they've made it worse. Right because they've ripped up more i i don't know yeah. what they've done in yeah. the last two weeks can you they did they ripped they, they had to chase it further back to make the slopes adequate so they did they dug out more of the asphalt to chase it further back i've seen some boards being formed up there's some boards in place now which means they should be closer to pouring concrete and hopefully that's the final solution but again they haven't i've seen those boards there for two weeks now and they haven't poured any there, it's stuff that things have been formed up, but no concrete's gone in. So I, I don't know what exactly is going on if they're still having this back and forth argument. You know, if, if the contractor puts the boards in to form the concrete, the state should be able to measure those boards and say, yes, this is the slope we want. You know, as long as the concrete matches the form boards, the concrete should be good, theoretically. So, so is I there don't... anything, is there anything that we can do? as a committee, as a town, as anything to talk to anyone in DOT? Does Guilford have the ear of anyone in charge of EOT, DOT, do you? Uh, I know nothing about how that stuff works. We have the local site engineers contact and they have about as much pull as we do. Um, a lot of that stuff ends up having to go back to Boston and bounce back to us. Um, it's a very slow road. A letter from the committee wouldn't hurt. To DOT, you know, yeah. accessible as soon as possible. That wouldn't hurt, I guess. I okay. don't know. 
I don't know if Guilford would recommend that or not, but I would, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, I think it okay. might be a good idea. Okay. Uh, at least let us bring it up to their attention that it, before the school starts, it will be in the worst situation with the students all coming in and all the constructions going on. I, If we're done with this topic, I also want to bring my... Uh, go over my same old comments again about Mill River, uh, the pavilion part, mm -hmm. and Amherst neighbors hold their yearly meetings there. And in the meeting that was held, not this past summer, the summer before, there was a older woman that fell off the side of the pavilion. And this happened when the town manager and I were chatting. So it happened in front of our eyes. And then I brought this up to our uh, DAC meeting. And then the decision was going to be that until further improvements are made, that site was not to be used for public affairs. And again, this summer, it was used by the same group and the same problem. But what they did is I noticed that they put some um, trash bins, uh, at least discouraging people from going that, that way because there is a threshold, like maybe about, oh, less than a foot maybe, but enough to throw people not prepared for that off their balance and fall. So that should be, uh, the restrooms are a big issue because there are no restrooms near the pavilion and people were wondering where are the restrooms? And they had to be guided through the pool area, behind the pool area. So those two things are, I think, in my opinion, high priority with Mill River. I'm sure there are hundreds of other violations there which we'd like to improve eventually, but there are some things it should be prioritized and we shouldn't wait for the whole grant process to be completed and we should get uh, money from the state and use it, but there are other things that is of uh, concern to people that are using the facility, the pavilion. So I guess I have I have a question, which is, if the if the instructions from Guilford, I don't even remember who said no. Is the inspection department? The inspection department said that there should be no events at Mill exactly. River. He's he's the one who went there. He's the yes. one who closed it down. How on earth did Amherst neighbors get a permit to use it? Yes. How did they get one? That all goes through town hall, as far as I understand, the pavilion rentals and whatnot. So I, I don't know who, where yeah. that. Um, pavilion rentals are through Amherst Recreation. Okay. So maybe they don't know what the inspector decided. I don't know. But That's it's, you know, if the inspector said it wasn't safe, and if the inspector right. said that it should be closed That's right. because of its, because it's a hazard, then nobody should be given a permit to use it. That's, that's, right. number, that's number one. And number two, um, Jason, can you uh, report? I mean, putting in a bathroom near the pavilion is probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is but that accurate? Least there could be signage showing where the best, uh, the bathrooms are. People don't know. They eat. They ask each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, until until there is lawful use of the pavilion, in a way, we don't have to spend good money after bad to do anything about that because there shouldn't be anybody using it, according to the inspector. And I would. I I don't know who's. Uh, is it you, Jason? Is it you, Pamela? Is it you, Jennifer? Who would talk to the inspector and make sure that that is still the opinion of the inspector and then everyone in the town should know it. That's right. That's so right. Uh, I'm a little concerned because um, the right hand doesn't communicate with the left hand. We have enough trouble if they do. 
But when they don't, if somebody had fallen off and the inspector right. said no and recreation said yes, then we have trouble. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but I, I'm wondering if the reason to find out how much all of it costs is that if we can't use it, we don't need to put up signage. Because that'll however, just. The, however, town has limited areas for that kind of usage too. So I understand, you know, they don't want to say, no, you cannot do it. But then if it is not safe, just putting trash barriers there to block people from falling, uh, that's such a medieval way of looking at these things. Right. So. Well, it was, um, a non, it was an area that isn't supposed to be traversable. So, you know, the, the accessible route is somewhere else completely in the area where that sort of low area is. You're not, people aren't supposed to be trying to walk through the inaccessible area. They're supposed to, so the trash bins were a way to guide people to the accessible route. Um, but I get it. I There's think this person fell off. Yeah, I don't think she was yes. walking. I yeah, think she it fell off. Walking. She just fell off. I mean, it was yeah. it was an accident, right. um, but it was. it was an accident that if there had been even a railing there, um, and maybe that's a cheaper way to you know yeah, deal with I it. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think you know, oh. you know what I mean. There isn't any state law that requires a railing for eight inches, so there's no requirement that there be a railing there. But since they have, since they have a problem, Marty, help me with this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Okay, but I mean, it would seem that we should be able to put up a railing, but the trash barrels achieve the same purpose in a way, um, but they weren't using it to get, they, they weren't using it a path as a pathway, Jason, they just fell off. Right. I mean, it was somebody because who was, was standing- an open area and the trash right. yeah. and actually was, in effect create a, a, a stop. Basically, they yes, kind yes. of do act as a railing and it's, yeah. get it, we, I mean, know, we knew it was a stop gap, but we've got, there has been some money set aside to yes. for improvements at Mill River, so we're working on that. Um, yes, was, that well, they took some ARPA you. money and put it towards this project, so I need to get a look at that report that I haven't seen yet that details all the deficiencies, the ADA deficiencies, and then I then we can start addressing it one by, one at a time. So that that's definitely on our list, and we are looking at it. Yeah. it so the next sort of question got added that, very late. <laughs> the question that comes from all of this is that there is a DOT grant. We've gotten it many years. Um, it is due on September 30th or something like that. It, it was opened last week, a week ago today. Um, and they look for, for all having to do with accessibility projects. Um, and somehow, I hope the planners can be engaged in this conversation, but by waiting till September, it'll be a little bit late because it'll be like the 13th of September. And I'm sure everybody always gets their applications in at the last minute. Um, but I'm just wondering what kind of project we could ask them for money for. I mean, like if you said the town has X number of dollars to do X at Mill River, in which case the inspector, if they had additional blah, 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 would say that it was okay, that might be something to apply for. Yeah. Because it has to do with accessibility of a public and, space. And public right? space. Which is um, heavily used, yeah. I'm sorry so to interrupt. I just wanted to announce that Christine Brestrup is in the in the room oh, as well as Cody has joined the meeting. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, welcome Cody, welcome Christine. So I'm afraid you're in the hot seat right away. Do you know anything about the grant from MOD um, that we have applied for in the past successfully? Um, it's open now, it closes September 30th. And it has to do with accessibility features that the town would like to, um, you know, create or improve. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I don't know who usually came up with what we should apply for. Do you know anything about what we might do? Well, in the past, this is Chris. Um, yeah. In the past, uh, we have applied for MOD grants and we've been successful. Um, Maureen uh, Pollock was the person who did that. Um, we have a new um, planner here now, uh, Rob Wachilla and I can talk to him about applying for an MOD grant. We haven't really talked about it among ourselves about um, what projects might be uh, suitable for this year's application. Um, we'd probably also wanna to talk to Jeremiah LaPlante, who's the facilities director, and Rob Mora, 
so I can certainly um, initiate that conversation. Um, and that can include, it can include anything in an elementary school, but not in the, any of the regional schools, correct? Because that's not Amherst property. Is that right? I believe that's the case. Okay. All right. So what we talked about before you were able to come is possible doing something with the pavilion uh, at Mill River. I'm sure they're not going to fund a temporary railing. Um, it would have to be a permanent thing, but if the town had a certain amount of money put aside and it only needed X, Y, Z to create the the accountability feature, the, the accessibility features, maybe that would be good. Maybe Mill River would be good. Maybe if there's more money needed for the accessible traffic signals, maybe that would be good. Maybe, I don't know anything about whether the libraries, um, and I guess that would be South Amherst or North Amherst since Jones, isn't really gonna to be too functional, um, would need money. Um, and I don't know if there's any further interest in doing anything at Bangs or Town Hall. I mean, the Town Hall project that we know about, which has to do with trying to figure out how people are gonna be able to get into Town Hall with a wheelchair. I'm, I don't even know where that is right now. I think there, Marty, do you know where that is right now? No, okay. I haven't heard, had any conversations about it. That was a conversation that Marty and Guilford and I had a number of months ago. Yeah. And I don't know if anybody has discussed it. I mean, it's sort of like something we don't even know how to do, right? Um, I mean, that that's is correct. Yeah, that, that is correct. Okay. I wonder if these in these application for grants, I wonder if there should be one or two people from our committee to participate in it. Because when I look at these things that need to be done, there are so many of these things. But in my opinion, we should prioritize what is a safety issue rather than more in the real world. I mean, best of uh, the conditions, we should have also this or that, you know, but based on necessity and about the danger of use like in the well, pavilion because they are not going to fund a temporary ramp that is a oh, waste oh, i know system. i know i mean a temporary railing they are not going to fund that because it's just going to be ripped out they don't want to do anything like that am i right chris yes that's right yep okay i mean they are not going to fund that i'm not saying the town shouldn't fund it but if you want mod money they want permanent solution or permanent access um you know, something that'll make a long-term uh, impact on the accessibility of programs or the accessibility of places. Um, and we have to come up with something. Um, perhaps we need to go back to that study. Has so any, the is any, ADA is transition any, plan? Yes, yeah, um, Jeremiah it, consults that frequently. Jeremiah LaPlante, the facilities director, yep. He okay, does. so I don't remember if you said we need to talk to him or if Jason said we need to, that. I said that he would be part of the conversation to decide what project we should apply for for the MOD grant. Okay, I um, would there be any problem if someone from this committee um, were involved in that conversation with Jeremiah and whomever else? I think there wouldn't be, but I need to um, check with Jeremiah and Rob Mora to see, you know, what they have in mind or if they've started okay. anything. So. Okay. So it'd be good because um, there is, and I don't know how much money we're going to get, not more than 25 or 30,000, although it says you can apply for up to 200 or something, but nobody ever gets that. Maureen told us if you look, if you try to get too much, you get nothing. So she had a, a way to figure out what kind of formulaically what kind of projects would fly and how much they cost and somehow she always got them she so, did she was excellent at that yeah um i don't know anything about how she did that um but jeremy jeremiah may know um how mm -hmm. how to make because what we want is a successful application for something that's going to have some long long impact and we could potentially i suppose we could have another well, I don't know. Um, I'm wondering if anybody from, no, people from MOD would not 
consult on this, I don't think, because they have to decide. That's sort of a contract. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, okay. So, Christine, did you have anything that you wanted to report to us that wasn't just about those three um, projects that we asked Jason about? No, I didn't. I, I saw that list and I didn't have anything else to report. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions for Jason or Christine? One, I want to give one positive comment. The um, roundabout they made on Pomeroy Lane, and I have been using it, it is, uh, it is settling now to its final point, and it is very functional. And it speeds up the wait time. One of my PCs come from uh, South Hadley, and she says she had to wait a long time in that traffic light. Now she just gets into the roundabout, and it cuts on the time she was spending waiting for it. So it was a good project and very nicely done. Do we know anything about Thank pedestrians? You. That I haven't. I'll well, find that out yet. when I have yeah. my hairdresser, when I see her, because her shop was across uh, across from the gas station and she had big concerns. And yes, how a lot of people be, do. But I will find out from her when I see her. <laughs> and I don't think anybody had important. any question about whether it was going to be good for cars. Mm -hmm. But the big questions about were the about pedestrian. whether it was going to be good for kids crossing the street to go to the school. For kids, you know, for anybody else crossing the street to access the businesses, um, so I think the I I'm not ready to say that the, uh, well, that those, the parts, those parts aren't complete yet. So they're yeah. they're in the yeah. works. They're the next they're the next pieces of the puzzle to be built. Um, yep. They have, like I said, they have some of the sidewalks paved. Uh, they mm -hmm. have a lot of the ramps are formed. But until they get that last two inches of asphalt on, every ramp has a two inch drop off right now yep. because they yep. haven't filled in all the asphalt yet. So yep. right now it's not great. But um, when it's all said and done, it'll be amazing. There's going to be extra, you know, there's the crosswalks around the intersection. Then there's a crosswalk um, further down near the bus stops that sort of if you're coming from like the USDA buildings or the uh, there's Hampshire Gymnastics is back there and you wanted to cross over to get to the gas station or any of those, there's a crosswalk down there yes. as well as the crosswalks at the intersection. So it's it's really you're huge. talking about the you're talking about crossing 116 on the north of the yeah, north of the roundabout. There's yeah, a crosswalk yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. on yeah. that north okay. end that's completely yeah. separate from the roundabout, but it has a splitter island so that it gives you great visibility. We have lights on each side, you know, so yeah. it's very lit up at night and it's that that one's going to be excellent. I think I think okay. people are really, yeah. people are already I see people crossing there now and they're already like, oh, this is so much safer because people aren't hitting the gas to make it through a yellow light anymore. They know they're going to make it through the circle. They have to slow down for it. So it's already yeah. that one's already working really well. OK, even though it's not nope. finished. Yeah, good to know. Excuse me, so, I'm going to need yes. to leave in about okay. five or six minutes. Um, I wonder when is your next meeting? Well, it's not going to be until like September 12th. It, what about this Thursday? Well, we don't have a quorum that we know about. Oh. Um, actually, we could talk to people here. How do people feel about this Thursday to discuss the application from UMass? Um, if just a half an hour, 3.30, so Pamela doesn't have to extend her day, and so that we can talk about the application from UMass. They want a variance for a new building, for an auditorium railing. I mean, I, have, I wish we could get somebody from the project to talk about it, because I have a question. Actually, um, that's but, what I was going to say. Um, I can't be involved in this, but I spoke with the project manager this morning, and they would really like to be able to present this to you. It is complicated. It's not an auditorium. It's actually <laughs> similar to what we saw at the student center. The student Which was badly done, according I... to the state building inspector, who was <laughs> sorry he approved it. In public, he was sorry. And it's oh, exactly what I thought of. It's exactly what I thought of, Marty, except this is new construction. It's not even a retrofit. So I was like, why are we dealing with this again? 
in construction well, documents space. I think it would so be I'd love to very, meet with these guys. I think it would be very be beneficial for you to meet with the designers and the cons code consultant. Okay. Um, so we have to find a time when we can do that. That 3.30 on Thursday seems to be a good time for them. I just got that oh. confirmed. Oh, uh, I can make it. We need four people. Saren, are you able yes. to be there? Yes. Uh, Jim, are you able to be there Thursday at 3.30? Which Thursday? I'm sorry. This, yes. Just two days from now. Because they have one week before yeah. the AAB I is going to vote on this. I can't do it on this Thursday. No, I can't. No. Okay. Sorry. Looks so like Cody can. Hart. How about how about Cody? Looks like Cody can. Looks like Cody can. And what about Ian? Yes, I can. You can. Okay. Oh, good. Then we'll do it, and hopefully we can get Elise. Uh, wait, did Elise give you information, Pamela? Yeah, El Elise is not available on Thursday. Not available. Yeah, but okay. if. Um... Well, yeah. so Saren and uh, uh, Saren and Ian and Cody and I yeah. can be yeah. there. Okay. okay. I, yeah, that's four people. And Pamela, I sent the... you a list of of the recipients for a Zoom. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So if you could send that out, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Then they'll be there. Okay. Uh, can I just ask you, Marty? Is this the same state inspector that we dealt with about the other UMass project? Yes. It is. David Holmes is the inspector for UMass. Okay. Okay. Um, and he approved this one too. He must have had a better reason this time. After well, the no, last he, time. he's that's why he's that's why there's a variance request. Okay. Uh, because he did not approve it. It's not a matter of his approval or not. He doesn't uh -huh. he doesn't have purview on this other than okay. Initial and that and the response is to ask for a variance. Got it. Okay, so they will explain this Thursday at three thirty. We don't yes. have the three days posting, but we can do this as an emergency meeting. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, this is great. Three thirty Thursday. Thank you so much. Thank you for arranging it with them, Marty. Oh yeah. And okay. Myra, Chris uh, was asking can... when we meet Chris. again next month. That is. I'm looking at my calendar. It seems like it is the 12th of right. September. That's correct. Yeah, Chris, I'm sorry. That's thank you. September 12th. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I I tried sorry. to answer that, but I got way late. Um, so we at September 12th, you only have like two and a half weeks to write a grant. Is that enough? Probably it is. Although I Maureen think it's enough to do. write. It usually takes longer to decide what to write about. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to okay. figure out. So, okay. So you have like five weeks to come up with a, um, could you inform Pamela when the people that are going to make this decision are going to meet and she can let the committee know and we can figure out if any of us would want to or could attend? Could you? I will do, do that. that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Myra, this is Ian. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. Coming back to an earlier part of the conversation when we were talking about roads uh, and state budget for roads, um, and you were wondering about the fair share money for that. Yeah. Um, I have three numbers here. Uh, one is 150 million statewide for the coming year. Um, and that's broken down into 100 million for construction and reconstruction of municipal roads and bridges, um, which Amherst could could uh, access probably. Um, and then the other 50 million is in uh, construction, preservation, reconstruction, and repair of state bridges. Um, but it would be that, I presume it would be that first 100 million that Amherst would access. Well, that'll probably be distributed by formula, right? Does it does it come by grant? I don't know it, that. It, it I, might, would, I would hope it's by chapter 90 formula. Yeah. That's the easiest to access and the most fairly distributed the grants are very hit or miss yes and also this is in addition to previous uh money that's in the budget for um roads and bridges mm -hmm. that's not going to help us with this um 116 project because it's for fy 24 right right um so we can't access any of that money until next fiscal year which will be spring 
Okay, Christine, thank you so much. Jason, thank you so much. I appreciate you giving us so much of your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Myra, this is Jennifer again. I yes. just wanted to say that there is time to post the meeting within the 48 hours, as long as oh. we post by 3.30. Perfect. Okay. That's okay. great. So we could, well, we don't want to add anything else to it. We just want to add this um, UMass request for money for the computer. I don't know what they're calling it, building. Um, okay. So the next thing is uh, many of us went to the um, Northampton meeting um, last month where at which they showed Crip Camp, the movie with um, Judy Human. Um, and what she did. And then there was a pretty interesting conversation after Ian was there, Saren was there, I was there, and Elise was there. Um, and there have been some follow-up uh, emails. Pretty much they did a survey about whether people want to do it again. And people seem to think that they would like to get together again. So I don't know what role this committee wants to play in any of that. So I. I'm just bringing it up to see if there's anything that you think we could work on. Primarily the people were from Northampton and Amherst. There was one woman who was very articulate from Holyoke who was, um, I believe she was mobility impaired. Is that right, Saren? Yes, it was, this is the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. And um, so she was from Holyoke. Pretty much everybody else was from Northampton. Um, and then there was, us Definitely. and it was a very nice congenial group of people that we all thought we mm -hmm. could have more uh, and Pamela was there I'm sorry yeah at least then I wouldn't have been there if Pamela wasn't there um and it was very nice of Pamela to to write you know and I so I really wonder I wonder if there's anybody who has any interest in taking the lead with connecting with them if there's anything we want specifically to work on with them I just thought that I'd bring it up because it just happened and it was a very, I thought, useful um, meeting. Yeah, Sarah and they had a wonderful space, which was very nice, very inviting space. Right, because they have a senior center in Northampton. Yeah, North I know. <laughs> anyway, um, but you know, where's the money gonna go? Is it gonna go to a senior center? Is it gonna go to Mill River? Is it gonna, there's not enough money for everything. That's the problem. So where, where are we going to put the money? Anyway, I don't know if anyone, um, and Pamela, feel free to be a participant here um, because you might have, uh, you know, other uh, observations. So I don't, I'm very happy to open it to Ian, Saren, Marty. Um, Marty, by the way, are you flooded out in Vermont? No, no, we didn't get flooded. We, it was the road to get home was flooded and uh, washed okay. out. <laughs> okay. We're lucky high enough. It wasn't yeah. that bad. Okay. All right. Um, so Sarah and Ian, Pamela, do you have any observations that might be helpful for us going forward? Well, I mean, I would think that it might be a good to have a partnership with them. You know, we could keep each other uh, informed. And when there's some advocacy work, which they bring something, it seems like they're a very active group. So I think that might, you know, the two towns working together might be a good idea. I can't think of what we can do right now, but in the future, we should share each other. We're thinking of doing this. What do you think? Or it might be a good to have partnership with them. Okay. This Ian, is did you have any? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree. A, a partnership and and um, one of the things I valued about it was the community building aspect of it, um, uh, it which, which goes hand in hand with partnership. Um, and both in terms of uh, Ag advocacy issues, but but also just in terms of building sort of a, a, a stronger sense of community um, around the issue of of disability advocacy and disability justice. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I I'm trying to remember. I I think there may have been some folks from Franklin County, uh, either Greenfield or somewhere else. Uh, but as you mentioned, it was primarily 
Northampton and Amherst people. Yeah. So um, does anyone want to take the lead in communicating with them? Don't all answer at once. <laughs> I, I, can, I can do that. You can do that. Yay. Yep. Great. <laughs> this is good. OK, so I actually don't know who the chair of the Northampton or who the person from Northampton would be. But I know Keith, what was his last name? Hmm. With a B. Yeah, I think it's Benoit. Benoit. I'm, I'm not, yeah. I think you're right. OK. So, so he is the Pamela of Northampton, from what I can tell. <laughs> he has a different background. I think he's a planner. Um, but he's the Pamela from Northampton. And Ian, if you want to contact him and find out who on the Northampton, they have a commission on disability or disability commission or whatever you call it, um, they they are that status. But if, if you wanna find out who the person that you might wanna talk to about possibly, you know, how we could work together, um, I think that would be great. If you wanna be our liaison to them. Sounds good. I great. love it. I yeah. love it, thank you. Okay, now we need to talk about the com commission on disability. Uh, Pat said that she, Pat uh, DeAngelis is our liaison to the town council. She is not able to be here today, but she sent an email to Pamela and to me um, about, well, I actually wrote to her, I don't even remember what the order of any of this was anymore, but I wrote to her and I, oh yeah, I guess a week ago, I sent her the applicable uh, mass general laws which I believe are something J, 40 something J and 22 G something. I wrote it all down and I sent it to her um, that these, there are two uh, mass general laws that need to be adopted for us to become a commission. The first one is just making us a commission. And there is pretty good argument for that because according to Jeff Dugan at MOD, the commission is a standing committee, whereas a town committee has a fixed duration and a fixed project, a fixed purpose. And once the duration and purpose have been run, they are disbanded, whereas a commission is ongoing. And since this committee has been going for 30 something years, I think we're probably already a commission. So I don't know how the, the town council could vote against that. The second one that's 22G is the one that's a little stickier because it has to do with money. Um, I went to that presentation at MOD that they did a couple weeks ago on Zoom um, and they had a number of presentations from towns um, that has to do with a variety of things. But one thing that came out of several of the towns was that they, they are commissions. They have been approved to receive all of the uh, HP violation uh, monies. Commissions are allowed to have a budget. They're allowed to have an appropriation from the town they're allowed to receive gifts and they are allowed to receive or uh, they are, if 22G is passed, they are um, emboldened to receive the parking violation funds, which apparently according to the mass general laws at the moment can be between 100 and $300. And a number of communities have raised it to 300 which is a lot more painful than 100. Um, so I don't know how the town would feel, how the town council would feel about that amount of money, whatever it is. 
my sense is that somebody, Pat or somebody laughed it off and said, we'd hardly collect any money on HP violations. I don't know anything about that. Do you, Pamela or Jennifer? Uh, this is Pamela. I've been told that the fines, uh, the amount of money that's collected um, in fines is pretty small, but I have not seen the numbers. So it would probably be worthwhile to actually find out what the um, amount was that was received in you know, a fiscal year so that you would know what that amount is. Okay, so uh, Saren, okay. uh, Jim, people who would notice these things that I couldn't notice, do you know very much about the amount of illegal parking that you see? Do you, do you see a lot of illegal parking? Do you feel like there is not so much or that there's an enforcement problem? I really know nothing. Marty too. I mean, anybody who can see parking spaces and who's in there. I personally don't see a lot in the way of violations. I mean, probably like everybody else, I haven't been downtown as much since COVID started. And I don't know, you just get out of the habit, you know, but nevertheless, whenever I go by spaces, they seem to be, most of the time they're empty, which is fine. They should be empty unless somebody with a placard is parking mm -hmm. there. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, Seren's experience may be very different because um, she's going to be looking for a space downtown. So I don't know. I mean, I guess my question that's associated with that is what do these commissions do with that money? Yeah, uh, they the seem purpose? to do all kinds of projects. Like one of them had a fair amount of money that had accumulated and that they got from gifts and they were able to fund uh, I don't think it, whether it was Boy Scouts or a boys club or a boy, you know, a community organization that wanted to do something that would make their facility more accessible or that would allow for more accessible participation in their events, even in their place. I mean, there were some really interesting projects that didn't have to do with we're going to fund a sidewalk, we're going to fund a this, we're going to fund a that. But it had to do with civic organizations that were interested in increasing the level of accessibility of their um, activities and that didn't have the kind of money that they needed in order to do that. Um, we could get a list of those things that, um, that Jeff Dugan knows about. Um, and he seemed to be pretty aware of a lot of the kinds of things. But it's, um, you don't, I mean, you might want to fund something for the town, but I think they were funding private civic organizations um, to be more accessible. Myra. Uh, yeah. A, I look at it a little different from you are looking at it right now. It seems like our prime goal should be to upgrade ourselves from committee to commission. And when we get money involved with it, it becomes quite, pretty difficult whether the town really is actively uh, writing tickets for violators of HP places and things like that. It's beyond that. that but when you say, what well, can we want to keep that money, then there's, they will have second thoughts about it. So yeah. I would not really go with it. I will just say we are working. Uh, we have been functioning for the past 30 years or so. So we think it is time for us to become a commission. My main goal in doing that is they will pay more respect to what our recommendations are. They will take it take us seriously rather than as compared from it coming from a committee. So that's my main goal. And then maybe we can say that we also would like to see if, uh, if the parking tickets are over a certain amount, then we can tap into 50% of it or something. And maybe in my opinion, rather than using it to support other organizations, we could look at it to have a very respectable consultant to see what can we do to improve this project. Like, for example, that intersection thing. 
you know, between Amherst College and uh, 116. I have no idea. I haven't seen it. I can kind of visualize it. But in a case like that, we can just find somebody who does that as a consulting work and maybe use it for those, whether it will be enough or not. But I wouldn't start it with the money part of it. So you would say divide 8J and 22G that we want. We want to become the commission first. We'll talk money later. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay. How do other people feel about that? This is Ian. Um, I like that idea. Um, also, uh, just anecdotally, in terms of seeing uh, parking spots be used by people who don't have placards, um, I feel like I see it frequently. Um, I, I don't really keep track of the numbers of times I see it um, in my head or or list it anywhere. Um, I, I just know that I get annoyed and aggravated when I do see it happen. Um, and I did see it yesterday at a Northampton Starbucks. Someone pulled into the um, spot spot without a placard um, and uh, ran to get their coffee and, and went back to leave. Um, so I, I, I think raising the, the fine level would be a good idea, um, but also focusing on, on becoming a commission first would, would maybe be more um, uh, effective. Yeah, maybe okay. we can. Yeah, th I think so. And uh, I was at the town hall um, trying to get sworn in. And unfortunately, the clerk wasn't there. So it was a struggle to get into the town hall. So I have no idea what they will do when they uh, get rid of that parking place in front of the town hall. That's another story. But there, there was the sign and it is $300 fine there and wow. i said whoa that is so high that's what i thought personally 100 to me is good enough but 300 dollars 300 dollars people won't do it 100 they might they'll figure oh, i get away with it maybe i'll do you know 300 they're not going to do it eh, i don't know <laughs> um that's okay uh cody uh marty do you have any opinion about how we should do this? I think I'd leave the money out of it too. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Cody, did you want to say something? Yeah, I'm just shocked after 35 years of being a community. This conversation is just now happening. And yeah, we should be a commission. It's yeah. just how do we navigate the money aspect? Is there any state support if we need it to come up with what needed to meet that criteria. You're asking, is there any state support if we were to become a commission? Well, I'm saying it's if we're little short on the money aspect, is there any support we can get to meet that criteria of having what we need to have to make, I mean, we have a sorry case, it's just the money aspect. So can I respond? Please. Yeah, so um, I, I think that um, the becoming a commission does create an incentive for the town council 
to provide an appropriation to support the work of the commission. However, uh, and this is based on my very limited experience, um, the support from the town council for other commissions is relatively small. And I'm Cody, I think you're asking like, how do, how do we meet the gap financially between like doing the work of the commission and, um, uh, and, um, and if you bypass seeking the funds. And I, uh, I think there's always gonna be a financial need for more support to do the work of the uh, future commission, probably more than what the town will allocate. So it's always gonna be a combination of looking at grants, looking at support for MOD, seeing what um, is on tap by you know, Chris and the planning department in order to meet that financial, uh, the financial needs of doing the work. Um, I do think that if you choose to pursue um, receiving the financial support um, under the uh, state law, what I remember Jeff Dugan saying, and Jeff is, uh, Dugan is from the Mass Office on Disability, is that in his community, he gave us an example where they actually collected the fines and held on to them for several years. And when they had accumulated enough to tackle a larger project, that's when they expended the, the money. And um, the example that I remember from his, I think he's in Situate. I want to say he's in Situate. I think he is. Right. His example from Situate was that they um, they saved their fine money for several years and then they used the money to fund a project that would um, create more beach, uh, more accessibilities to the public beaches um, in Situate. So um, something that the town probably had on their list. Right. But further down and because they collected the fines, they were able to completely fund that project. Um, so I, I uh, you know, I think that it might, uh, it might be worthwhile not to, uh, to make a decision to forego the money, um, especially if it's a small amount and you're gonna have to mm -hmm. uh, accumulate it over a long period of time before you're able to really e expend it on, on, a, uh, on an identified need. So the question I would ask is, are we able to, let's say we took Saren's advice and did not deal with the financial aspect of 22G um, right now, but that we, if we become a commission under 8J, do we have the right to have a budget line so that even if the town didn't put anything in it, if perhaps there could be, you're allowed to accept donations if you're a commission. Um, there, some of the commissions around the state actually have appropriations um, that they are able to use, 5,000, 5, 10,000, 25,000, I even heard, um, that they, you know, that they, that they, you know, got obviously money from a town in a budget doesn't, doesn't sit in the account, it doesn't roll over. So you spend it or you lose it. But um, I, 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 um, I don't know if we're allowed to have the bank account without the eight, without the 22G. And um, they did collect, yeah, that's exactly right. The way you described it, Pamela. I, I think they bought we beach wheelchairs um, and I forget what else, picnic tables that were accessible. Um, it was like that. Um, so they didn't do anything about a bathhouse because that's way too expensive, but they did buy beach wheelchairs and they did buy picnic tables. Hmm. Um, so, um, I mean, if we become 20, if they, if we do 22 G, I don't know how much money they would even have to lose. I don't know. I mean, it would be an interesting question to find out the answer to. Who collects those fines? I don't even know. Do, so do I think the fines would be collected by, um, so be the police, right? Uh, who would be issuing a ticket. And I don't know whether 
it's going to the police department, but the the citation would be issued by the police department or by the parking enforcement because um, these are two guys who are. So maybe the collector the knows. The collector's maybe, office. Yeah, I would the say collector would the know. Collector, yeah. town clerk. Yeah, the collector. The I would collector's think. office. Yeah, because they get the money. money. Yeah, and they probably know what it's for. So it'd be an interesting question. Um, yeah, we can find out from the collector how much how much they get in a year. I mean, the town isn't going to die if it's like, you know, $750, right? <laughs> you know, they're just, yeah, sure, you can have it. They'll probably do that. Um, but if it's a substantial amount of money, maybe yeah. they won't. I don't know. So given what Pamela said, do we want to ask Pat, uh, Pat to talk? Pat said she would meet with the town manager and I believe Lynn, um, who is the president of the town council um, to talk about this. So the question is, what do we want to tell Pat? That we want to forego 22G or we want them to consider doing all of it so that we can start to accumulate funds? 22G is the right to become a, or- the No, 22G is the money. The money. In, yeah, yeah. Well, if we have enough discussion, maybe we should put out for, to vote. Hmm. Right. So I was, at the moment, just, you want to start with. Myra, can I, mean, I interrupt yeah. for a second? So I'm yeah. just going to suggest that someone um, make a motion, right? Yep. Um, for you to. But we don't know what we're moving yet. <laughs> um, the right, um, so are, are we interested in moving? that we asked the town council to approve our becoming a commission under mass general law, whatever it is, 48.8J, which is the, is the that one, and 22G or not yet with 22G? Well, I'm not a voting person as yet, but um, you know, going back to the movie Crip Camp, I think we should go for everything that, that's coming to us, basically, uh, which would include 22G. I mean, we're not talking about a lot of money, but um, hey, uh, I think people with disabilities should be treated with respect. And uh, uh, this has been a committee for way too long, and a commission is the right way to go, and so is a source of income for the commission. That's just me. Okay. You're just as important as everybody else. All right. Mm -hmm. What if, uh, <laughs> further yes cody was that cody who said whoops yes that was cody go to ask if i can make emotion to move forward with the Okay, I didn't understand the end of it. Go forward with the commission with all that's attached with it. Is that what you said, Cody? Yeah. Okay, so agreeing with Jim. Um, yeah. What do you think, Ian? Uh, I, or I'll second that and vote aye. Okay, so we'll, we need a motion now. Um, uh, uh, Cody made the motion. Trying to make the motion. Oh, you made the motion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. And and Ian seconded. Perfect. Okay. So the motion has been made to ask the town council to approve both 8A and 22G. Okay. Um, so we could vote. I mean, unless somebody wants to say something. Is there any discussion beyond what we've had already? Okay, all those in favor of the motion made by Cody to fund, to request funding over under 8G, 8J and 22G say yes. Yeah. Oh, I guess we Aye. Okay. Yeah. I guess we need that roll call. Marty? Aye. Saren? Yes. Cody? Yes. Ian? Aye. 
Yes. And I'll vote and I'll vote yes as well. Okay, so we're voted five. Oh, and Jim can't vote. But Jim, can you get yourself able to vote before the next meeting? <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, um and how hard is that online course, by the way? You're what? How hard is the conflict of interest course? Oh, wait, I missed that. So it, I'm sorry. Um, Jim it was, asked it was more how, of a joke, but yeah. oh, how I'm hard sorry. is the online cor a course in conflict of interest? That's all. <laughs> got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I got it. Yeah, you didn't do that yet. I, I think you can get get approved. You can get <laughs> official before doing that. Um, okay. So I think that's everything. So the vote is five, nothing. And we, we can't even consider Jim a member yet. So he doesn't even get to be an abstention or anything. Okay, all right. So I think that's everything that we were going to talk about at this meeting. And that what, so what we need is a letter to the state about that intersection. And I'm gonna call the collector and find out how much money comes in for HP. Um, so does anybody want to take a shot at drafting a letter to the state? I would be happy to edit, but if anybody wants to take a shot at drafting a letter to the state about how we need to, uh, how we're very concerned about that intersection and how it is not accessible and how they have kept it inaccessible all summer and that we hope that it will be completed before school starts. I don't even know who to send it to. DOT? Yeah, I would think. Marty, do you know who they are? Do you know where they are? You who, who to send no. that to? No, okay. Well, I Guilford would, knows. Yeah, Guilford and, and Guilford knows. Jason knows. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, well, I can try to write the letter. Um, and the, the, the call to the collector is easy and I'll send a note to Pat that we voted about the other thing. All right, so four of us are going to meet with the architects on Thursday afternoon at 3.30. Okay. Correct? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. And thank you for telling us it's very co complicated, Marty, because the first thing, I know you can't talk about it, but the first thing I thought of when I read it was, here we go again, UMass, another railing they don't want to build. <clears throat> and this is another, this is like new construction. So why couldn't they have made it a little bit wider or taken one seat out so you can put a rail in the middle and people yeah. can go both directions and hold on to the rail? I'm just very confused. So I'm going to ask them. On this. Yes, I think you need to talk to them. Okay, because yeah. I apparently have it, I have it wrong, correct? <laughs> okay. My concern is that it seats 240 people and only the four seats are accessible. So is that, how is that accessible? So, yeah. It's a good question. I don't know the actual number that it has to be for 240, but we can ask the architects on Thursday. Yes. Um, okay. All right. So if everybody, we need all four of the people to be there. And apparently we're going to have the uh, architect and maybe the uh, the inspector who is. No, you're going to have a code consultant. Okay. And the architect and the project manager at least. Oh, wow. That's a lot of people. That's you more than have actually more than you may, may have more than that. Wow. Okay. They want this badly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, and we will see those of you Thursday who can make it. Ian, Cody, okay. uh, Saren, and me. And yes. Jim, if you can get yourself sworn before Thursday, you can come. And it would be really probably a good idea. Well, actually, he can come even if he's not a member. That's true. But he said he couldn't come, though. Uh, I, oh, right. I don't anticipate being in state on Thursday. So that's <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, got it. All right, I forgot about that. Okay, all right. So thank you, everybody. And we'll, September 12th is the next meeting other than the Thursday. 
Okay. okay. And if anybody comes up, like if you wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh, I know what we need to do. Just please write it to Pamela. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, you wear days and nights. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Right. Bye-bye. 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 Mm.